Uh oh. Um, I didn't do that. You did that. Did I do that? Dang it. Okay. All right. Well, good. Welcome. Welcome to my kitchen. We are going to talk about batch cooking today. We talked about it before. I'm using some slides that I've used before. I've updated them a little bit. But then I actually found a couple clips of some batch cooking ideas. I gave Linda and she sent out to everybody a PDF, a little like 12 page document about batch cooking and gave some ideas. And I actually, that's what I actually made today was all those things. Because I wanted to test it to see if it was true. So we'll talk about that when we get to that part. And then I thought with all the stuff I made, I just show how to put a few things together. I love batch cooking. I don't want to cook every day of the week. So I love making things in advance and just throwing it together. I think batch cooking, especially in the way we're doing it today with some of the things we made, is particularly helpful if you live in a household where not everybody is following the same diet you are. Because they, they can still make whatever they want. My husband is a prime example. So he'll eat the stuff I made on the sides, all the stuff I batch cook, but then he's going to grill his meat or do whatever he wants to do in that case. So I think it's really nice in those situations too. So when we think about you know, our healthful diet, of course, we were thinking about our whole food plant-based diet. I know that's what a lot of us are already doing or striving toward. So if you're thinking about, well, if I'm going to plan my meals, what's going to be in the meals, and you know the basics, it's fruits and vegetables. And ideally, I would say have a fruit and or a vegetable at every meal. That's the way you're getting them. Have whole grains, at least a starch at every meal. You don't have to be afraid of starches if we're doing the whole grains. I'll show you a slide on those. And have some protein every day. And plant-based proteins would be your beans, your legumes, um, tofu, tempeh, those kind of things. Today we're using lentils as our protein source. And so we want to have a little protein at every meal. So looking at that plate, that's what we want to put together. So then here would be just how am I going to translate that into every single meal? Well, pretty much at every meal, you have a fruit and or a vegetable, a grain and a protein. That's pretty much it. And then it's snacks. And remember, you don't have to snack if you don't want to. If you love to snack, snack. Um, but your fruits and veggies or a protein or a healthy fat are perfect to have for snacks. And remember, snacking is super appropriate if you're hungry or it's going to be a long time until the next meal. You don't have to snack. Even if you have diabetes, you don't have to snack. If you are experiencing low blood sugar, maybe you've made this change in your diet and you're finding, gosh, if I didn't have a snack between lunch and dinner, I go too low, then we need to adjust your medication. So you don't have to eat up to your medicine. We want to adjust your medicine to match the way you eat. So if you love to snack, great. And if you don't, you don't have to. So I just want to point out on the whole brain, I'm not talking about just any grain. I'm not talking about white flour grains. I'm talking about whole intact grains whenever possible. Maybe some whole wheat bread, maybe some corn tortillas. Those would be a little more processed. But here's a list, and sorry, I have to get a little closer to see everything on the list. But we've got the wheat berries, which is actually where the, our wheat flour comes from. They grind up those berries. You've got oats, everybody knows that. Quinoa, so we've got quinoa we made today. We've got brown rice we made today. Then there's all these other ones that we don't always have a whole lot of, but I really encourage you to try some of the whole grains, especially if you can find them. They're not as easy to find these days. But buckwheat, corn, barley, I love barley. You know, I do, I do overnight oats a lot. And so I have my steel cut oats mixed with a little barley overnight and then I microwave it for a couple minutes and I've got my breakfast. We're gonna learn you can batch cook your breakfast also. Um, some of these are kind of funky, like that frica. That to me is a lot like barley too, but originally it was created, I think, the story from Bob's Red Mill when I took the tour at the Bob's Red Mill place, that, you know, a field burned and what was left were a field of grain, what was left were these like smoky grains, so they didn't burn down. They just ended up with this smoky flavor. So that's what frica is. You don't find it a whole lot, but you got your rices. So anyway, think about whole grain. So I'm gonna encourage you by the time we're done, if we're really interested in doing the batch cooking, 
that you cook up a pot of greens, you cook up a pot of beans or lentils, and then you make your dishes for the week out of those. But I just want to remind us what we mean by whole grains. So when you're thinking about the batch cooking, first of all, well, what's in season? So, and I'll have a slide just for us to talk about that. I mean, grains are always in season, so you don't have to worry about that. The grains and beans. But I'm thinking the vegetables and fruits that go along with it. And also, what's your week going to be like? When am I going to do my batch cooking? The batch cooking I did this time, and I usually generally spend two hours. So you can cook everything in an hour, but then for the extras, that's like another hour. And yesterday, I think it was an hour that it took me to do all the dishes for every pot and pan in the kitchen that I dirty. But anyway, pick out a few recipes. And you know what I like about batch cooking too, is you don't have to do a recipe. And I am a total recipe follower. I love a recipe. That's how I create things, is by following a recipe. But with the batch cooking, you can throw some things together and have to be a little more creative if you're interested. So here it is, Sunday, you're thinking, this is what our week's gonna be like, this is what's in season, or this is what I found at the farmer's market. And you make a little bit of a menu, make your shopping list, go to your farmer's market, know where things are in your store, get your pantry stocked so that you think, oh yeah, I have it. There's nothing I love more than to find a recipe and think, oh, that's all stuff I have right here in the pantry. Um, and then you're going to prep your foods for the week or a few days. I tend to think in five-day chunks. I don't know why. Because I think, you know, I do it maybe on Sunday, and I think it's going to last me for the week. And then by Friday night, we'll figure something out for the weekend. And then make your meal components that you can recycle into other meals. So like today, I've got some quinoa. Now that could be a breakfast. That could be a lunch. It could be a dinner. I could throw it into a stew. So we want to think about recycling everything that we make. So what's in season now? I don't know what you're cooking, but everybody's giving me zucchini. I got some zucchini in my garden, finally. We've got the tomatoes, so we've got loads of really tomatoes, and this is just the best time of year for those good tomatoes. We've got every berry and fruit known to man. It's such an awesome season for the peaches and the nectarines and the plums. Strawberries, fabulous out here. I live in Placer County and we've got the strawberry stand. So when you pull into a stand, they also will they also grow vegetables. They figured out that people want that too. So I have my bag of zucchini, I have my bag of cherry tomatoes. Um, they don't generally have greens. Greens I feel like are always in season. And then I can't see what's here on my bottom picture. Oh, it's just tomatoes and peppers and things like that. So we're going to be using a lot of those things today. So then you've got to think also, what can I prep for the week? What would be something I could make in advance? So oats, you actually can. I'm going to show you a little video clip in a minute. You can make those in advance. And I've, I've done that before where I have little jars of every oat. But you can also do overnight oats, so I don't tend to do it as much as I used to when I work. Um, grains you can prep, have for the week. You can do your beans or lentils. Tofu, you know, I grilled some tofu the other day on the grill, so now I can use that throughout the week. I could have even just gotten a new box of tofu and scrambled it and had that for a few days. We can do our potatoes. I did a few sweet potatoes for today. We can do other vegetables that we've diced or sliced in any way that we think we might use them this week. Um, and I tend to like to do them on the grill this time of year, although it's for today's purposes. I did some veggies that I just did in the oven, um, but I love to grill a bunch of veggies and then we have them for at least three or four days. Um, and then you can also get your things ready that you can just grab quickly. So you can get your strawberry, you can wash your fruit, you can slice it if you're gonna to wanna to do that. You can have your carrots that you've sliced up. If you don't buy the little baby carrots, I tend to buy the whole carrot. You can just get them all ready. So now we don't really have to cook this week. All we're going to do, we spent two hours doing all this, and now we're just going to throw meals together all week. Okay, we'll see if I can manage this. This is a clip. I've got two clips. One is, um, I think they're both either Forks Over Knives or Engine 2. I can't remember which. Um, but the first one is real quick, and it's just showing how easy it is to batch cook. The next one will show how to put together a couple of the things that you batch cook. So let's see if this works. I don't know. And I got to remember to end it because last time that was a disaster. Let's see, you think it's going to go? I think 
I have to ask Dave? I don't know. This is always so fun to figure out. There you go. Oh, is it doing something? Did it do it? Oh, did you click it? I did. I practiced this earlier. Should we click it? No, it should just be me because I'm going to play it for you. Oh. Well, dang. Okay, I'm going to get, I'm still sharing my slides. Yeah, sorry, this is not the most creative way to do it. No. I think I'll let me copy it. No. Well, dang it. Sorry, there's just you always just, something. Well, you, you, can you play it from your screen, oh. but from the, the browser? Probably, but I see what I did wrong. I see where I went wrong. I had accidentally, when I was putting this in, I typed it, I made a typo. And I didn't go back and fix it. Oh. See that uh -huh. in there? But yeah. no, of course, it's not letting me fix it. Let's try this other way. See if that works, because I didn't make a typo in that one. Okay, well, I hadn't already opened them thinking, oh, I got this down, I don't need to do it. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave that for you guys. See, I'll eat, send a little link to Linda. But it just shows like in two minutes how you how much water to add for steel cut oats and for lentils and for brown rice, I think. And, you know, it's really easy. And then the next one puts it all together. But I'm going to show you that. So sorry about that. Let's keep that part. Okay. So what's on the menu for this week? All right. Well, from the, my batch cooking this week, and I did it based on that handout that Linda gave you. Because they said in less than an hour, really in 45 minutes, you will have cooked your quinoa, your lentils, your sweet potatoes, and your rice. And so I did it. I followed their directions. I have an Instapot, so I'm more prone to do those, a lot of those things in the Instapot, but I know not everybody has them, so I thought, I'm going to try it. I started at 10.30. They said I should be done by 11.15. And except for my sweet potatoes, I was. The sweet potatoes were kind of big, so they took a little bit more time. But in under an hour, I had all those things cooked and ready for the week. And I'll show you them when I, done, when I unshare my slides. And then while they were cooking, I made a few sauces. Linda also sent you a, a little handout on the sauces. I was talking to my sister, who has become whole food plant-based, and the last, uh, I guess it's been since last fall. She's been hugely successful and loves doing it. And I was telling her what we were going to do today. And she said, you've got to teach them sauces because without sauces, it's like everything is nothing. And I, I agree with her because when I did my batch cooking and basically all I did was boil those things and roast those sweet potatoes, I didn't add any seasoning at all. So I can add seasoning when I put them together, but the sauce really helped. So mm -hmm. I put together some, a slice, or I mean, a handout, and one of them is an aioli that John just sent me. And I made that, and John did it's really good. You were right on about that. And so I made that one. I made a more, another aioli, or they call it kind of a mayonnaise. Um, and they're both from soaked cashews, both those recipes. The difference between the two is one added one of those adobe peppers that you get in the can. And you know, I get those a lot in the can and then you only need one and there's like eight in there. So then I just freeze them in little baggies so that I can pull them out when I need them for a recipe. So it's got a little more kick to it. I also made a salad dressing and my favorite salad dressing that is on that handout is my three, two, one salad dressing. It's three parts, so you, I did tablespoons, but you could do quarter cups or whatever you like. So three parts vinegar, two parts Dijon, one part maple syrup. And you just shake it up and you got a great oil-free dressing. So I made that kind of while everything was cooking. And then you're gonna have extra. So I, I waited till today, although I could have done it as soon while I was cooking also. I roasted some veggies. I chopped some veggies that are raw that I'm able to put in my salad. I've always got the greens on hand. So really, it did take me two hours to do all that yesterday. But now I've got more food than we can barely eat. 
this week, I think. So that's what I'm doing. And the first thing that we could do, and I'm going to show you, is we can make a big salad if you want to. And so I'm going to go through the slides and I'll come back and just, we'll make one together. But the little jars you see there, I don't know if you're into that, but my friend Jill, who's a dietitian, who's also come to speak with you all before, I was with her yesterday and she said, oh, they're into making the salads in the jar. And so she sent me a picture of a couple they just made last night. So the nice thing about the jar is you put your dressing in the bottom and then you put, I think the beans or the protein are the hardiest things that could soak in that dressing. And mm -hmm. then you layer all your other items that you want in there and then you put some greens on top. Mm -hmm. My, I, it looks, look how cute it is. My yeah. only problem with that is that's just not enough for me. I want a lot more green, but I would say that would be a fun way to do it. And you could do five for the week and then dump that into a bowl on top of more green. With your dressing and everything, it would be perfect. You could also carry it with you on a picnic. You can just eat it straight out of the jar if you want to. So that's the kind of thing we're seeing on Instagram these days. You could take one and give it to your mother. Yes, exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. You could give them to neighbors. You could give them to those people who don't get out very much. Yeah. But, you know, I also think, and I saw it on a cooking show, they did it and they took those on picnic. So that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. So for your big salad, you got all your greens, the darker the better. You add whatever raw veggies you want, and then you top with your batch cooked items. So today we're gonna top ours with quinoa or rice or lentils, then you sprinkle some nuts or seeds on it, and maybe you throw some fruit in there too. Like I love to have blueberries on my salad. So that's what we could do with a salad. And then we could put together some meals, and that's what I'm going to do right now. We could put together a breakfast. Now, I cook quinoa, but you could also do steel-cut oats. That clip that did not work. You could have seen them making steel-cut oats. And so that you would have to eat. But, you know, we could eat it traditionally. So you see that picture there on the left. It's just some oats or whatever that is with some fruit on it. But also what's in now comes to the breakfast bowls. So you make it. And then you're, you layer your fruits around it. You add your flax and your um, chia seeds. You pour some of your plant milk on it. You've got your bread. Some people like it cold. I don't. I, I always eat mine. So even when I do my overnight oats, I cook them for a couple minutes just because I like them to be a little warm. But some people like them cold, and that's fine. And then we can make a big bowl or salad for lunch, let's say. So look at that pretty bowl. You layer your greens on the bottom, and then you put all your batch cooked items on top. How easy is that? And then with that sweet potato, you could also, and what I do a lot is I just slice the potato, and then I add that to my bowl, and I think that's what they did in that middle bowl. But the one to the right, we're going to take a big uh, sweet potato, and we're going to stuff it with, by mixing up some of our ingredients, adding a few spices, and then I it's going to be my dinner, and then I'm going to microwave that when I do that. Um, you could also take any of the things you put together, and you could stuff them into a pita, on the tortilla, you could wrap them, you could put them on bread as a sandwich. So all your ingredients are very flexible. I was also thinking of those lentils. You could put it, add it to like your pasta sauce, so then that could be your protein and your spaghetti. So there's lots of different things we could do with that. So I think now is my time. I'm going to un, yeah, I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to get out of here. Oh, I'm going to stop sharing. I think that's what I'll do. And now, can you see me in my kitchen? Yes. Okay. I see you. I see you and Mary, but I don't see Linda or me. But I don't need you. Lots of people are on video, so which okay. is exactly what I did when you're doing the dance. I unvideoed me. But I want to make sure you can see me. And I think if you, I don't know if I'm very big on your screen, but if you pin me, then that would make me bigger so you can see my food a little bit better. So, first of all, I guess, let's see, sorry. I'm not quite sure how to do it. I'm going to show you everything I cook. So, okay. So, I don't know how you can, if you can see this. So, these were the batch cooking items. On that handout, 
that Linda sent to you, this is what they tell you to make and how to make it. So I made brown rice, two to one. It took about 35, 40 minutes. It was the longest cooking item, the rice. The lentils, two to one. So one part lentil, two parts water. This one didn't even take half an hour to be done. Oh. They don't give you time, which kind of made me nervous because I like time. But you just keep checking. About 25, 30 minutes, you've got those. Quinoa, going to be your fastest. I didn't have much quinoa left, which I didn't realize. But this one is one part to two parts also. Cooks in about 15, 20 minutes. Just when the water is gone, it's done. And one thing it didn't say to do, but I like to do with my quinoa, is I put my quinoa in my dry pan and toast it a little bit first, and then I add my water. And then also, what took the longest for me yesterday was the sweet potatoes. So I just poked a few potatoes, stuck them in. Them. These were just huge. They took an hour to cook. But all this was done within the hour. And then, I whipped up my sausage. So I've got, oh, I can't tilt these. I'll think they'll spill. So I've got the aioli. That's John's recipe with the um, cashews. Excellent, excellent. And then here is the more kind of Mexican-y one that was the cashews, but we added that adobo pepper. Here's my three, two, one dressing. And you know, I could have made it much bigger. I just, it depends on how many salads you're gonna be making this week. And then I actually threw in there some homemade salsa. I just had a bunch of tomatoes because everybody was giving me tomatoes and they were had tomatoes at the stand. And so I just, in my food processor, throw in, threw in some tomatoes and some cilantro and um, jalapeno. And so I've got some salsa too, because I think that's gonna go well on our sweet potato. So then I cut up, I feel, I cut up enough for two big salads. Now, the reason why those quart jars really aren't quite big enough is to me, this is my salad bowl. So if I did that quart jar though, which I think would be super pretty, I would just put a bunch more greens in here and dump that salad on there. So I tend to like to get the, the box green. Um, spring mix that's 50-50 with the spinach, but I also throw spinach in there. I'll throw kale in there. I'm just about out of kale, so I'm saving that for another dish. But I will just fill this up. Sorry. I'm going to see that I'm not a very neat cook. Okay, so I've got my greens in there and all over the counter. And then I just chopped up a bunch of raw veggies, just, just your traditional salad salad veggies. I've got some tomatoes, because they're out everywhere, so I'm gonna divide them between the two. That was one tomato. And then I've got some cucumber, got a million of those lately, so I divided that up. And then I got my carrots. I might have needed to have even a bigger bowl for all this stuff. And then I've got my celery. And I I'll just throw it all in there. And then I'm gonna go to my things I made. So I think I'm gonna do my lentils for my protein. So I'm gonna scoop, I like to get a half a cup in there. So because I'm doing it this way, it's not gonna be super pretty. You know, if I'm doing a bowl, like for lunch or for dinner, that I'm putting everything together appropriately and you can see it like all the pictures are, you know, it'll be a lot nicer, but in here, I don't care. I just kind of dump it all on here. So now I've got that. You do however much you want. And then I'm even gonna throw a little rice in there just for fun, what the heck. And then do you think I've done it? No, because I also wrote in some veggies. So I've got, I, don't, I tend to always like onions and mushrooms in my salad. I go for the G-bombs, where you're trying to get your greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds every day. So I've got some mushrooms and peppers here. And then because we have tons of zucchini, I got my zucchini and my onion here. So I'm going to scoop a few of those in here, too, just to add to that. Now, I might do different things in a week. I might do um, cauliflower, let's say. 
I don't know whatever I have or receive in or get the score. And then I make sure I add a few of my mushrooms. And now I can remember if I already added them, so we might have too many. And then a few peppers. I just discovered, I thought I didn't like green peppers. All of a sudden, I like them. It's really kind of weird. OK, so there's my, so now I've got two lunches for this week. I'm going to sprinkle my pumpkin seeds on there. I get these in the bin at Winco. So I sprinkle a few of those on there. And now it's actually, it's ready for me to put my dressing on when I'm ready to serve it. If I'm taking this somewhere, I actually have a little old, old Tupperware, little plastic dressing container that will actually also stick in my bowl. So now I've got two salads. When I worked four days a week, I would do my four salads on Sunday, just like this. So then you never have to move. Okay, so now I've got salads done. Now let's do a bowl. So a bowl, now you might want to be hot or cold. I don't know, it's up to you. I seem to like them hot, but I don't know, not always. So here's my kale that I was saving. So I'm going to put that at the bottom of my bowl because I'm going to microwave. So sometimes I might cook my kale separately. I don't know. It depends on your mood. This is what everybody else in the house is doing too. So I put this at the base of my bowl, and now we're gonna maybe make it a little prettier. So I've got my lentils, sorry, you probably can't see this very much, but I put my lentils on one little quarter of it. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna save that quinoa. I'm gonna do a little brown rice. And then I'm going to do my veggies. And you can also use any leftover veggies you have. I happen to have some broccoli in there from the other night, so I could put that on there. But I'm just putting it all together. Again, I got my greens, my beans, my onions, all that stuff. I'm trying to get my G-bombs in. So I've got one big old bowl. Now I'm gonna, I would microwave it for, you know, 30, a minute, minute and a half. So it just kind of warms it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna pour one of my luscious sauces on it. And then I'm gonna eat it just like that. So we got another meal. What did that take? It's gonna take two minutes in the microwave, that's it. Two hours goes a long way to make everything good. So there's a bowl. And then my last thing, I'm gonna do my sweet potato. Where'd it go? These were so big that I think the original kind of idea was you just use one, one whole one and you put stuff in the middle. But these are so big, I don't think I can do that. And you know what? Now, now that I'm kind of squishing them, I realize they could have cooked just a little bit longer. But what I'm gonna mix up is the stuff we have. So I'm gonna take my quinoa, And I'm going to take my lentils. Now remember, these have no seasoning at all. So it's got to kind of count on your sauce or your seasoning that you put on it when you put it together. So what I'm going to add to that is my homemade little taco seasoning, my salt-free taco seasoning. So I'm just going to give it some flavor. And I think I told you last time, I think I just Google taco seasoning. I'm not very creative. But I also always love to have a little chili powder. I go through a lot, so I have the big containers. So I can throw a little chili powder because I'm going to make this sort of Mexican. -y. And then, I don't know, does anybody do, use this stuff? Tajine? It's kind of my new favorite seasoning. It's sort of like lime chili powder. And it's I think it's popular in Mexican cooking. It's got a great flavor. I get the no salt variety because it can have a lot of salt. And then if I want a little kick to it, I'm going to do my cayenne pepper. And maybe a little cumin. That always goes in Mexican stuff, right? And then I'm going to just whip all that up. It doesn't look super pretty here. But I want to make sure you go look at that 
link that we couldn't watch because they do a great like taco bowl with the rice and the lentils and then adding all this extra stuff to it. So you could also, if black beans were your thing that week, you could put your black beans in there. So I'm going to, this just isn't, I'm really going to squish all that much. I'm trying, maybe this one's a little better. I'm trading potatoes. Sorry about that. Ah, much better. Okay. Okay, then I'm going to put some stuff on it. I'm going to put, this was enough for really two potatoes. I'm filling that up. And then maybe I'm going to add a few veggies, like my peppers. And then maybe I'm going to add a little bit of my salsa. Got my salsa. You could add guacamole or avocado to that. And then I'm going to do my spicy Mexican sauce. Now, if I was clever, I would like have that in a bottle and make it all go pretty, but you know, I'm not clever. So then you can't really see it very well, but that is one loaded potato. But now I'm just gonna pop it in the microwave. Now, if I would really thought it through, I would have heated my potato a little bit more because it would take longer for my potato than my innards. And you could have also done your innards on the stove top with your onions, like if you didn't have any onions around. So there's lots of different options. But with the things that we made, we got a bunch of meals. I don't know how my husband and I are gonna eat all this. And then also you might even have like some greens, like some cilantro, which would go with this one, or parsley that would go with the others. So you can have all those things just to add a little bit more. So I think that's all I was gonna make. Let me make sure. Yeah, I think that's it, we got it. Okay, I'm going to go back to my slides for a minute. I need my glasses for that, which I seem to have lost. All right. Thank goodness you record this stuff. This is just embarrassing. Okay. So, based on that stuff, tell me, what do you want to try this week? Would you pick a couple different items to batch with? And I guess, I hope, feel free to unmute so you can tell me what you think. Do you think you would cook like this? Would you make a bunch of stuff and then put it all together and have all these different options? You know, think of it, and to me, I've always said, do a grain and do a bean every week. The other stuff you could do as you go, but everything I, all the two hours I spent, we got it all for a week. Um, so what's gonna be on your menu? Then you gotta get that on your shopping list. What do you need to do to prep it? Because really, you want to make your life as easy as possible during the week. So then here's my, my phrase for the day. When diet is wrong, medicine is of no use. But when diet is right, you don't even need to have medicine. So, and that is so true. So many people say, well, just give me a pill for that. But if you don't keep up a good diet, a pill is not going to help. So that's your thought for the day. And I Okay. Is, oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Debbie, is corn is corn okay of a vegetable, a healthy vegetable, or not really? It is. Stand up. It's got it such, you know, and thank you for saying that because if I had some corn, I would have put it in that potato. Um, yeah, it's great. It's gotten a really bad rap. But I think it's corn products that aren't always so good. You know, they add corn syrup to everything. But corn itself is a good high fiber vegetable. Nothing wrong with corn. Okay. Cause I've been seeing it on sale at the produce. So I've been buying it because I like it. But I didn't know if it was, uh, you know, if it was ranking high up there as a vegetable. You know, it's, it's excellent. I don't know that it, it's a nutrition powerhouse of certain things. Like peppers are going to have lots of vitamin C, you know. And, but it's a great vegetable. It's high in fiber. I love corn. I know. Yesterday, I wanted to get down to real estate because it was 15 for $5. I thought, oh, yeah. Yeah. Corn is another thing that you can batch cook. So we grill it a lot. So I'll have it out on the grill. We'll maybe eat corn on the cob with that meal. But then I'll scrape it off, the corn, and then I will use it like in that stuffed potato. Or I'll make a nice salad out of it. 
there's a great salad recipe that I think, I don't know, I think, I'm sure I've made it for you all before, so Linda must have it, but it's zucchini and corn and cherry tomatoes with just like that balsamic vinaigrette on it. It's excellent. So easy to make and so perfect for the season. Now, I know Sharia, which I hope I said that right, wanted to show a couple of her things. And if while she's doing that, I might try to find my couple clips if we have time. Sharia, are you out there? Uh, hello, yes. Hi. I've been practicing Hi. my Indian dancing. Just loving it. Thank you for doing that. Oh, that's good. I'm glad um, people are joining and enjoying it. Yeah. Okay, so do you want to share your screen? Um, yeah, so I have the video and the slides, so I can share the video first. Um, okay. And then maybe go over the slides. All right. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm gonna go try to find my clips too if we have time. So you do your thing, I'll do mine. <laughs> All right. So I'm not seeing anything, Shrey. I don't know if you hit, are you able to share your screen? Oh yeah, I'm trying to do it right now, I think. Um, You think it's working or not? There you go. Um, so can you see this? Yes. Or? Yes. Oh, okay. So this is um, a quinoa salad that I made over the weekend. Um, so I'll share the video and then I'll talk about um, the nutritional benefits of this.
Um, okay, so I hope everyone was able to see that, but it's on the website um, uh, for you to look at it later if you want to. Um, so basically, that was just a simple quinoa salad. Um, and it's really versatile because you could add whatever vegetables you want, like corn or bell peppers or any vegetable really. And then um, as we were talking about earlier, any spices or um, sauces you could add to make it more flavorful. I know I didn't add too much to that salad, but um, yeah. So now, um, now I'm gonna share a set of slides and uh, talks about five um, main healthy whole grains. And um, just keep in mind that these aren't the only healthy grains out there. Um, I just picked these five to talk about as I felt that um, they had a really, they were really beneficial and had a good nutritional value. So I will share the slides. Uh, can everyone see the slides or, oh, there it is. Yeah, so um, I think these are, yeah. Can everyone see the slides or? I can see them. Okay. Um, so like I said, these are just five healthy whole grains that I thought had a great nutritional value and there are obviously a lot more out there, but um, so I will start with quinoa. It's the main grain that I used in my uh, recipe. And um, it's really high in protein. That's a major benefit. And uh, it contains all nine essential amino acids, and uh, which most other grains lack. So this is a huge benefit. Um, and not only does protein help you grow and repair your tissues, but it can also um, increase your metabolic or metabolism rate, and that can help you lose weight. Um, and it has twice as much fiber compared to other grains, and that helps with digestion. And it is, um, it's one of the foods that's on the lower side of the glycemic index, meaning that when you, um, when you consume quinoa, the sugars get slowly absorbed into the blood so that your blood sugar doesn't rise as quickly. Um, and this is also, again, the salad that I showed is a good gluten-free and vegan um, recipe. And if you add fruit to that, maybe with a serving of fruit, that would be um, an even healthier meal. And then it also boosts your HDL cholesterol, which is the um, better heart healthy cholesterol. Um, so yeah, those are just the main benefits of quinoa. Um, another important grain um, are millets and it's an ancient grain and it has a wide range of benefits. So um, it has high fiber like quinoa, and can reduce LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol that we don't want. Um, so oh, just to clarify, there are two types of millets you would probably see in the store if you were to go and buy it, uh, pearl and proso, but they have the same health benefits. So everything that I'm saying applies to both types of millets. Um, so the antioxidants uh, help, uh, help your body remove toxic or harmful, harmful products and can prevent some chronic diseases. And um, one thing that's different from uh, quinoa that millets have are they're rich in vitamins and minerals um, like calcium, phosphorus, iron, and like many other vitamin or and many vitamins too. Um, so that you don't really get in quinoa as much. So that's a huge benefit. Um, another one that we are that we um, mentioned earlier today, I think, are oats, like an oatmeal. Um, so. What's interesting about them is they contain beta glucans that again um, help reduce your LDL cholesterol or the bad cholesterol. And um, they are very filling and they cause a feeling of fullness after you have oatmeal, so um, so you don't eat as much and can help with weight loss. And um, they're also a good source of carbs and fiber. And what I mean by good source of carbs is they don't have too many carbs, but just the right amount of uh, carbs so that you can have enough energy for the day to get things done and, you know, to go to like Linda's exercise classes or the Tai Chi or our dance classes. So it's a good source of energy. 
for the day. Um, yeah, and then also with oats, um, you can add really whatever fruit you like, um, fruits you like. Um, and yeah, the fruits are also, if you were to add fruits, they'd be a great source of uh, vitamins. Uh, brown rice is another uh, important grain. Um, and what's unique about this is uh, it has a lot more nutrients than white rice. Um, that's because in brown rice, when they make it, um, only the outermost layer of the rice kernel gets removed. Uh, whereas in white rice, um, there are a couple, like many layers of uh, the top part of the rice that get removed and that lowers the nutritional value. Um, so brown rice has about 50% more of uh, phosphorus, vitamin B, and fiber. So uh, it's really healthy in that way. And it has a, a high amount of uh, magnesium that help control your blood pressure. And compared to white rice especially, brown rice has uh, less carbs, but more uh, vitamins and minerals and fiber. And then last but not least is barley. Just like oats, it contains uh, beta-glucans that lower the bad cholesterol or LDL cholesterol. Um, and it's rich in magnesium again, which um, plays a role in insulin production. So it can help control your blood sugar and blood pressure. Um, and uh, one thing that uh, is really important with barley, or all these grains, I should say, um, they reduce risk factors for heart disease by uh, lowering the LDL cholesterol levels, lowering the blood pressure, and then um, also increased fiber. So these are the five grains um, that I talked that I just talked about, and all of them um, are really versatile. Um, and as you probably saw in the pictures, you can add like any vegetables you have, and then with oatmeal, it could be a variety of fruits. So um, yeah, I guess that's a benefit because you can add more variety to your diet by changing the vegetables or changing the fruits you add um, to any one of these grains. And uh, yeah, these are all really good um, gluten-free like uh, recipes or like uh, grains that you could use in your recipes. Um, and so yeah, that's really um, all I have. Yeah, so those are those are the grains that I wanted to talk about, and I hope you learned something from this. Um, and yeah, I hope I just went over five, but there are many others that you could also. Um, there are many other healthy grains out there too. So that was excellent. Yeah. Thank you. That was good. I love that you included millet because that's some one that we don't use. We think of it as birdseed, frankly, and it's really good. And it's not one that most of us use a whole lot. So I love that you included that one. Yes, <laughs> thank you. And one thing on the oats I want to point out too, and I forget this, that, you know, I always think oats, you put fruit on it and it's sweet, but you can make it savory too. So if we're mm -hmm. batch cooking and we also we did our mushrooms and our onion, and maybe we even had some cooked kale or something, you can stir that in with a little nutritional yeast and have a nice savory oatmeal. I'm not into it, but I'm trying it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like about all these grains. You can add, even if you don't have like, a certain vegetable you can add all the other vegetables that you have or fruits or right. it's really easy to like yeah add anything to the grains yeah mm -hmm. uh, debbie i have a question yes sir uh it, you you always talk about steel oats yes uh, why are they better than just regular oats well regular you know you have the oat grow which is like how it grew pretty much and then they take it into the mill and then they just chop it up. That's a steel cut food. Yeah. Then they steam it and roll it flat. And that's the oats that we tend to eat the most of, our old fashioned rolled oats. They're all good, but it's just like machines pre-digested it a little bit for us. So they're still all good sources of fiber. They all have the beta glucan, but you maybe get a, a smidge more fiber and it's more of a chewy texture, but you know, I know not everybody's in the steel kind. I, I use both, so they're both fine, but there's probably a smidge more fiber in the steel kind. Okay, I, I got them one time and, and um, it seemed like the regular ones were easier to fix or quicker or whatever. They're quicker, they are. Quicker. Yeah, if you're gonna do steel cut, 
And when you cook steel cut, it's usually three to one instead of two to one on your liquid. And it takes like 25, 30 minutes. I usually soak mine overnight so it doesn't take as long as long. Oh, okay. But I okay, like a two you. week texture. Thank you. Yeah, good to talk to you, Jen. One thing about the steel cut oats is I usually uh, pan toast them first before I soak them. That's a great idea, John. It's great really idea. tasty. Okay. I'm going to try these. Any luck with your videos? Guess not. I, I have them. Yeah, if you have time. They're both less than a minute each. So I just pulled them up on YouTube. So I'm happy to show you if you're into it. Yeah, so I think might as well. We're here. Well, I think it would be super fun. Okay, here's one. This one is just the batch cooking, and it includes the steel cut oats. Do I, I need to share my screen, though, huh? Yes, you do. Okay. Dang it. It's fun to watch your brain here. I know, or, or lack of. <laughs> so if I go into my Zoom and then I share my screen and then I say share, okay, gosh, what a dork I am. Okay. And now you might want to hit full screen. Perfect. Super easy, huh? Okay, stop. Now I want to stop. This is where I went into, where I had problems before. Okay, now do I escape? Okay, where was that next one I had? And this is making the um, salad bowl, or the Mexican bowl. Okay, that was it. That's easy, huh? So what is engine two? And so you've got um, Dr. Russellston who is a cardiologist researcher in the whole food plant-based world. He's, I mean, everybody knows who he is. And then he's got a son, Rip. And Rip worked at a fire station. I think he had a heart attack when he was young and he worked there and he changed and they worked at engine two. Oh. I think it was in Austin, Texas. And they, um, he got the whole, you know, or a lot of people in the firehouse to switch over and then they used, this group as a research project, really, to see how well they do. And then a lot of the little videos, too, are Dr. Esselstyn's wife, Anne, and she and then the sister, or Rip's sister, Jane, do a lot of really cute little videos, cooking videos. They're real cute. So that's yeah. what, so yeah. Engine 2 was also a book and a cookbook and stuff. Excellent. This is okay. great, Debbie. So that's all we got. Any other questions, people, before I sh shut this down? Guess not. You guys are going to be busy cooking grains and, and beans. I'm going to be eating. <laughs> I got all this stuff. I wish I could have all of you over to eat, but we can't do that yet. Thank you. OK, thanks, everybody. It's good Thank to see you all. You. Thank you, Sharia, Thank you. for your part, too. Yes. Yep.